Hello guys and welcome back to Project Monaco. I hope you're all well. I hope you're enjoying the start of this weekend and we're really close to approaching December which um, is always an interesting time of the year, exciting one for many and um, it means I should hopefully have a bit more time to work on more of Monaco. Last time round we worked on the helicopter area, some hotels and in particular I really enjoyed working on this little construction site area as well. I'm thinking about putting that in a bit more around Monaco, certainly in the, uh, the more dense areas as well, because it's quite common when you look around Monaco in itself. But all in all, I was really pleased with how this came about. And I think we are slowly progressing now. Um, so I'm yeah really looking forward to where this goes next. And uh, hope you also are enjoying the series. I'm trying to push out more videos and content for Monaco, which um, I hope you'll be pleased to see. So in today's episode, we're working on this area once again, but we're working more towards the port area. So filling in with some of these hotel areas and working on some of the piers and adding in the rest of the harbor. So that's the plan for today's episode. So let's get back into it, shall we? Let's kick off. So the first area here is actually quite an interesting one. It's actually a big tent. <laughs> and as you can see on screen here, the area here is very unique. Um, this tent is used for events and shows, for example. And whilst there isn't the perfect asset on the workshop, we have found something that should hopefully work, which you'll see a bit later on. So as we put down the roads, let's um, have a look at the comments from last week. So one of the discussion points last time round was the talks of not really having a proper concrete colour. Uh, and what I mean by that is obviously our concrete area and colour usage through our theme is actually the bright orange um, pathways you see on screen now. And we had a comment from um, Arco who suggested we can sacrifice the gravel texture for a concrete one of our choice or use the PO cube thing to um, choose your own texture and yeah both of those will work we um, did sort of use the gravel texture previously in one of the first three episodes where we did actually change it to a more grey concrete which we then used across the um, the first major harbour so we have kind of done that already um, but obviously the texture aren't as good but I can obviously now use Fee Mixer 2 and we could probably look at that in a bit more detail Manavi mentioned that Monaco's population is actually 39k and our Monaco population has over 50,000 and yes you are correct. Um, we have gone a little bit overkill on the population but it's as I said in the episodes prior to this beforehand we was having about 7,000 people in the, um, in the whole of Monaco. Um, now I've changed the, mod the mods over and we can now accommodate more people a lot easier. Not many people are dying. Obviously we have ramped up and at the moment here you can see we're actually at 62k which um, isn't realistic I know and I know there's a few mods out there that can uh, make it more realistic so we will certainly look into that a bit more detail at some point but for now I'm kind of mm, I'm more happy that there's more people than not so we'll, we'll come to that a bit later on I think but thank you for the comment and pointing that out that's um, very useful to know. Next up we had a comment from the track suit slave or slav um, he mentioned uh, do you think your building style has improved along the course of this series it's a little hard to notice any changes when watching the videos but I think you would know better than anybody and I do believe so um, I think the building style um, has stayed similar throughout Monaco as it is their own sort of way you know Monaco buildings are very similar in their sort of zone so to speak um, but I think the way that I have um, improved a lot, personally, I feel a, a lot over the series is the filler areas. And what I mean by that is filling in the little gaps, um, not just with huge amount of foliage, but using different ideas, different techniques. And I mean, these are things I've picked up whilst looking across the whole of Monaco as I've built. Um, so the filler areas, I think, have been what's really upped my game when I've been building Monaco. Um, the placement of buildings, obviously, because I am trying to replicate Monaco, it's, you know, I'm, I'm doing what I can and what there is available and what's actually on the map that I can see. So, you know, it's um, certainly has improved. I think you improve every game, every game, every day you play this game. Um, and as I said a million times before, there's no wrong or right way to play this game. 
Um, no one is technically better than another person because everyone's in, you know, everyone's creations are different. Everyone's imagination and mindset is different. So, yeah, I think that's a really good question. I appreciate that, and um, thank you to everyone else who commented. Um, I think we'll keep this little segment in the um, future episodes. It's always nice to read out some of these um, nice comments, and as you know, I do comment and. Well, especially I, I read every single um, comment that is left on the video. So, yeah, keep those coming and I look forward to hearing your comments in this episode. But let's get back into the build. So as I was going through those comments, you saw we placed down the tents and uh, the tent structure. Tried to copy it as best I could in terms of what I can see on Google Maps. As I say, the, the tents aren't perfect in terms of the same as what is, there is in real life Monaco, but it works in my opinion. I did um, use the uh, the painter new mod to try and change the color a bit because technically this tent is completely white but we have got this blue and white stripe so I did try and minimize that a little bit and we've now placed in this little pond here I just wanted to add that in it is part of what there is in this area and um, the problem with small ponds is it's quite hard to make them look realistic the banks don't always look too pleasant um, so I did actually use the concrete um, key around this just to make it look a bit more tidier, make it look a bit more man-made um, as opposed to um, these sloping edges which meant that the actual pond would look a little bit out of place. So we done that and used that to our advantage which I think worked out quite nicely in the end. Now I'm thinking of doing a sort of Christmas special for Monaco, but I'm not too sure how or what we could do. So I need your your guys' input. Now we could obviously just do a very basic, it's snowing in Monaco and maybe make an area look a bit Christmassy. Um, or we could do something completely different just as a Christmas special. So let me know in the comment section below if you've got any ideas on what we could do as a sort of a Christmas special celebration. Um, I always like to do something Christmassy. Last time I did a little competition, so we may, we may throw something like that in as well, a little competition for winning um, maybe the latest expansion. Um, but that will be a good poll actually, guys. Um, I've always wanted to do some giveaways for people, certainly at the time of giving, such as Christmases. But I never know what to offer out. I mean, a lot of people already have the game, so offering out the base game is probably not really sufficient or worthwhile, but there are people who watch the video who perhaps are hoping for it for Christmas or looking to buy it in the future. So, you know, there's a few options for us. We could either do a base game um, giveaway, and I could do a couple of those because obviously they're cheaper, or we can do an expansion pack, and if so, which one would you like? Um, or finally, we could do some sort of a Steam gift voucher or something. So. Um, let me know in the poll section on the top right hand corner of the screen popping up now uh, what you would like to see is a Christmas giveaway and we'll certainly look into that. Now back into the game you'll notice there's a few buildings in the background here that um, are decayed and broken down. Um, now I did download a mod from the workshop that is meant to um, basically bring back to life <laughs> buildings that um, are abandoned or burnt etc and it's meant to do it automatically and it works perfectly um, but some of them they don't seem to do which is quite bizarre um, and I also I'm not sure if you noticed with the last cinematics I did for the last episode but there was a very slight pause every now and again and I did note that with this particular mod that if you do have it to upgrade and check the buildings daily as I did as the default settings are Every time it got to the start of a new day, the game decided to pause for a second and that pause was the game trying to replace all these buildings and uh, as you probably know over the many years of us building Monaco, there has been quite a lot of problems with our, with our sims and buildings and buildings being destroyed or abandoned. So. Every time that the game tried to update its max value, which I think is 25 buildings, it obviously took a lot of time to do so and that kind of caused a bit of lag. So you should now from now on see some beautiful cinematics with no issues, no pausing, no sort of stuttering so to speak. So that should hopefully improve things on the video. Now a little cool technique I worked out from the past was 
using the decal on top of the um, concrete, the orange concrete, and then lowering it down to an extent that the actual pattern changes from black and white to a orange and dark orange wavy lines. And I really did like this technique. I really did like how this turned out. It certainly makes this area look a bit more prestige and um, more like it is in, in real life Monaco. So that was a cool technique. And one of the advantages now is obviously with the Move It mod and PO working hand in hand, I was able to lower it down with Move It, which is obviously a lot easier in my opinion to do so, as of today anyway. Um, and then I converted it to PO after and was able to um, move some of the the lines and the vertices to change the shape and make it fit the area because the area isn't a complete rectangle. So hand in hand they work perfectly together and um, you know the mods themselves are sensational and it really has changed the way that I and I know a lot of you guys play the game as well so yeah brilliant work. Back into the build here so we've moved over to where we started to sort of leave things off last time. Um, so I wanted to complete the harbour on both sides of this uh, this part of Monaco and we've just gone for a similar approach to what we did on the left hand side here. Oh, it's not exactly as it looks in Monaco but there is some issues that we do tend to have um, with sort of these peer based solutions. You can't always get it to look quite right and I found this is probably the best technique to do so. You'll see here we're using the network terraform mod as well, sorry asset as well so just push and force down some of the uh, the actual terrain because sometimes you need to do that you need to force away some areas to make it do what you want to do um, and this is a really good technique to do that so we've done that and also the good thing about that is we've now extended the reach on the island so people will actually walk up and down the side of this as well if, if we made them if we made a path alongside it so again adding to the realism which again works really well um, and adding these stones here I think the are uh, the basic pebbles I think the other ones are done by strict toaster as well and hand in hand they work really well together really pleased with how that comes about and we're using the uh, the docks from Ronix here as well to create that so adding in some of the ships and the only thing I did notice when I built this pier is it's hard to make a pier such as this low to the sea level so I had to kind of use my imagination a little bit here and we've done some steps coming down to the pier because obviously the height difference between the the main pier and these little floating blocks is not realistic so we did that um, on that side but all in all it still works and still looks good to me. Next up is the busy placement of all these buildings. So in this whole segment on this right hand side, there is endless amounts of, I say high rise, they're not high rise in terms of, you know, most places you go, but for Monaco, I will class them as high rises. <laughs> um, so 
I took a combination of three or four buildings and the ones that I felt matched and worked the best together um, to place these down um, and just try to create the same sort of shapes or at least some sort of um, common placement that you tend to see in this area in Monaco. Um, the difficult thing was getting them all to work well enough. Um, it does become difficult when you're trying to overlap buildings to make shapes that shouldn't really be made with those buildings. <laughs> um, so we did have a bit of difficulty. There was a few techniques that I worked with to make this more achievable. And obviously, you know, when you're putting buildings together, working out the best way to turn or place those particular buildings to make it work is something that needs to be done. Um, for example, here you can see on that particular part we had to turn it around because there was no windows on that particular side. However, in some situations you'll see that I sort of double um, block buildings together to create the, the fact that they do have windows and balconies on both sides, whereas the main building only has it on one, but putting them back to back allows that to work. So a bit of a bit of playing around in this area. I mean, some of the parts don't look as good as I had hoped. Um, some of the combinations, perhaps you don't think will work or look too good, but all in all, it was a difficult area to fill in terms of its realism. Um, but I think it worked. It's, um, you'll see in a bit, it's once we fill in these gaps, it's when the area does start to come to life. And uh, we do also use the painter mods to change all the colors of the buildings to suit the area. So that at the moment it looks some sort of multi-colored amsterdam -y sort of look buildings. But once we change the colors so they are the same in terms of their blocks, it does come to life. Now, I've never tried using these particular roads with the parking on one side, and I really thought that this is the perfect opportunity to do so because there are parking on the road here next to the uh, the main, well, the second main harbour as we're working on here on the right. So I wanted to try that out and see how it went, and uh, we placed down the side parking, um, and it looks good. It looks good. I'm really, really pleased with how that came about. Now we're just filling in these gaps. Now, this is what I said to you earlier. This is the part where it starts to come together. At the moment, it looks very blocky and it doesn't quite really look like Monaco. But once we start adding in these paths, we added in some extra swimming pools um, and adding in the foliage. Um, I mean, that's one thing that you forget that Monaco is a very busy and dense area, but there is still quite a lot of foliage around. It's something that I've had to sort of learn and work with to make it look and work realistic um, but it's it's a case of picking the right trees and I think I've got the main trees I mean I always do add these palm trees in as well maybe I'm do go a bit overkill with some of the palm trees but to me Monaco shouts out palm trees and it, it it's a very you know it's a pleasant looking location especially when you add palm trees in as well now the difficulty I had with some of these swimming pools is I really wanted to add in this Oasis swimming pool. Um, but like I said, there is times where perhaps I should have used a different swimming pool because this one doesn't really fit. I had to move things around and kind of squeeze it in, but you know, all in all it worked. And we added some of these smaller swimming pools in as well to really push that. Monaco vibe of these are hotels and you know people are coming to stay and enjoy their entire their time in Monaco. So going back to the Monaco time scales or plans for the future, as I said earlier, there's a lot more time available in December for me to create videos. Um, this is the last video of Monaco that I have pre-recorded. Um, I went for a sort of a, a free episode build blitz, which is how I like to work on Monaco because with Monaco, you can't just work on one particular part. You have to, um, you have to really excel yourself and, and go all out. I mean, this whole area, if I'd done it as one episode, probably would have been about an hour and a half worth of um, footage, voiceover, commentary, and I think that's a little bit too much for City Skylines video. So, um, despite building all of this in a couple of sessions, um, I had to edit it down to sort of three videos. So I think we will probably move back onto the Isle of Wight series um, 
next week. It's been almost a month now since we've done an episode, and the last one was the one by uh, Rick4000. So we need to kickstart back into that. But like I said, I will have a lot more time, so I'm going to try and record as much as I can of both series and then edit as hard as I can and try and get at least one video out a week. And over Christmas, we may go for a couple more. Um, that is the plan. Uh, but like I said, the plan for Monaco is to complete it by around March time. So we need to really push ourselves here. Um, and talking of polls as well, let's go back and review the poll stats from last week. So the question I asked was, what streaming service would you like to watch a series on? Um, and it was between YouTube and Twitch, and it's quite surprising. Well, I say surprising, it probably isn't in terms of my following base mostly being on YouTube, but YouTube had 77% um, of the preferred platform to stream on. So over Christmas, I am going to do some live streams, and it probably will be sort of playing around with Monaco um, and having you watch me create an episode so to speak so we'll probably do that I, i'm you know i may do some twitch stuff as well because i do like the platform of twitch and i do have some followers on there that only tend to watch via twitch so we'll probably alternate but we'll stick to youtube for the majority but for the video for today that's pretty much it the finer details are going in now um, stick around for the cinematics i was really pleased with how they came about got some really really nice views and we are getting some really nice skylines now hence the the pun um, we, we really are now getting some good skylines with these areas we developed and uh, it's only gonna get better it's only gonna get better obviously the um, the frame rates probably gonna get worse but that's <laughs> that is expected when you're playing this game um, so yep it's uh, a give and take in this game as we all know but uh, we shall see how things go but I'll leave you with these final details and a bit of music and uh, stick around for the cinematics. I hope you enjoy that. And remember to complete the poll. And if you haven't and you did enjoy this video, please feel free to subscribe to keep up to date. And um, hitting that like button also helps the channel grow. And we have been growing a bit lately as well. And welcome to all you new guys that have recently subscribed to the channel. There's been quite a few of you. So thank you for popping along and um, hitting that button. And um, yeah, I'll leave things there and we'll catch up next time. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll speak soon. Thanks for watching and all the best.